In the Holy of Holies, if you have cared to check, you'll find out there are two cherubims that spread their wings this way and that way. Those are the guardian cherubims. And only two cherubims have that designation among the angels. Lucifer was one of them. If you check the book of Ezekiel and you get a full inventory of his designation, he was called the angel, the cherub that covers. Are you with me? So he was one of those guys. And those are the closest angelic creatures to God. And among the two guardian angels, only one was ever said to be anointed. And that was Lucifer, the anointed cherub. The other one was not, we don't have any evidence that the other guardian cherub, whose name was not disclosed in the Bible, was ever anointed. Are you there? Now, cherubs in this class have an innumerable number of eyes on their bodies. And if you have studied your Bible for a while, you'll find out that anytime the Bible speaks about eyes, it has to do with understanding and knowledge. So the description of this being was that it was a modicum of knowledge. And that's why you cannot come against him with your natural strength and hope to succeed. He is so ancient and he's so full of knowledge. The Bible speaks about his craftsmanship. That tablets and pipes were forged into his framework. And if you know anything about music, I think I, I know a little, not so much. Music is a combination of string instruments and wind instruments. And the tablet is a wind instrument. The tablet, the tablet is a string instrument and the pipe is a wind instrument. So he was music personified and because he was anointed he can come before God and discern God's mood through that anointing when he discerns God's move he produces sound that is consistent with what he has discerned oh he has still not with me The Bible says that he walks to and fro and up and down in the midst of the coals of fire. Even when he fell, he still maintained the oscillatory motion. But by the time he appears before God in the book of Job, God asked him, Ah, it's been long. How are you doing? How has been your movement in recent times? I've been walking up and down and to and fro. That's the same oscillatory motion he had when he was in Zion. Even when he fell, he did not lose it. It is in that his oscillatory motion that he mapped the entire world and knew the GPS location of Job. And he knew things about Job that Job himself did not know. He showed that mapping. He's been walking up and down and to and fro. You there? Now, when you deal with this guy, never think he's a novice. A senior man of God came to town one of those days, and a younger preacher was to invite him to the pulpit. So, in his charge, are you there? He said, Satan is a fool. Not. And I live in that city. I saw from that day, how Satan manipulated the life of that preacher that gave a charge and called Satan a fool. Jesus did not call Satan a fool. You will find your doubts will be cleared soon because he's not. He messed that preacher up. When the preacher was given that charge that day and he made that comment, he never thought there was any room through which Satan could bend his destiny. <laughs> he is not a fool. 
He says, I will ascend into heaven. What I want to do, I will not do it on the ground. I will exalt my throne. So he had ranking in the kingdom. But he was not satisfied with the rank he had in the kingdom, even though he was the highest among the angels. His intention was to promote himself contrary to the will of God. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. If we do a, a little study, you will find out what the stars are. Are you there? If we go to the book of Job, you'll find out what the stars are. When Job was giving us a testimony, Job and God encountered Job. Job was one of the few people in the Bible that asked God, why? And God decided to answer. And I know when you ask God why, he did not answer. The reason why he did not answer is because he answered Job. The answer he gave Job is a standard answer for any such moments that you are under pressure to ask him why. God decided to respond to Job and he decided to come and sit with Job to hear his depth because Job was saying the reason why God put him in this situation is because God has much ability, much more than himself Job was indirectly saying God was bullying him. And God decided to respond to Job and came and made himself available. Well, in order for him to advance his arguments, God said, I want to test you. I want to test your depth. so that your eyes can be open to your depth and if after your depth is tested you still want to advance your case I'll be present to hear you the Bible says that counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters and a man of understanding draw it out and the way you can draw it out is by questions so God decided to ask Job questions to, to test his depth if Job had the vocabulary the stature to stand with God in an argument. The first thing God asked him is, when the foundations of the earth were laid, where were you? And then uh, Job realized he did not have what it takes to stand in an argument with God. He was not ancient enough. The, the tricks and the dynamics that were fastened into the foundations of this civilization. If you don't know it, then you cannot interpret the reason for your circumstances and your situations. And for those of you that did masters in mathematics, you will find the next question that God asked Job has to do with circle geometry. Job did not answer the first one before the second question came. So there was no need. But God kept asking him questions to test his depth. After God confronted Job in this way, Job repented for asking God why. One of the things that Job revealed in Job chapter 36 verse 7. Because, are you there? Verse 7. I think 38, not 36, 38. Is it possible for you to be faster? He also asked him, 36 verse 7, he said, were you there when the morning stars sang together? Were you there when the sons of God shouted for joy? 
You know the meaning of this scripture? Okay. So as God was creating the physical world, are you there? The morning star sang into the material. Their singing was part of the fabric that God weaved into the creation of this natural world. And that's why when you clap, you hear sound. You stamp your feet, you hear sound. You knock the wall, you hear sound. Knock wood, you hear sound. Knock iron. Sound was trapped into it. And it was a morning stars that did that. I say you are not with me. So you now understand what it means when Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the realm of the stars. And this thing that he wants to do, he must do it in heaven. Not on it. Not in your father's house. He must do it where? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So the stars of God are the angels. He's going to exalt his throne, the workings of his throne beyond that angelic habitation. He will move it beyond the angelic quadrant. He wants his authority to come from a pedestal that is higher than angelic authority. Is that clear? Okay, so let me take. We're still there in uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Then he makes a statement which I would like us to. He said, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will sit on the mount of the congregation that is in, in the sides of the north. How many of you still remember the book of Psalms chapter 48 that says, Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised, the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Now, in heaven, Zion, there is a location in heaven that is the true Zion. The true Zion is God's administrative headquarters. The true Zion is the highest point in terms of topography in heaven. That's where the seat, the throne of Jesus is domiciled. And in the book of Ephesians, the reason for which the throne of Jesus is domiciled at the peak of the topography of heaven is because it is captured in God's eternal purpose that all things, Christ should fill all things in the universe that God is creating. All things. In fact, the book of Ephesians reveals what God is doing in the entire expanse of time. In the entire expanse of time, you might call it decade, you might call it century, you might call it aeon. But in the entire expanse of time, what God is doing is that he is ensuring that everything comes under the authority of the Christ. Are you there? Because in that civilization that God is building, he is the pinnacle of that civilization. And in God's eternal purpose, it was ordained that he should be preeminent in all things. And that is revealed by where his throne is domiciled. So, if you, if you come into heaven, you can't miss where the throne is. It is it's on a high platform. The highest terrain in that environment. Because everything must reflect Christ in that world. It's the same desire that Lucifer conceived. He said, I want my own mountain where I will be the entity that is in the pinnacle of that civilization the mountain of congregation are you there? Yes, 
then finally say i will be like the most high the same way the most high rules from zion i'll be able to bear rule and the influence of my government to be visible i'm tired of taking instructions i want to give instructions now oh my <laughs> i'm tired of taking orders i want to give out orders now i'm tired of being corrected i want to be the one correcting others now i'm tired of being instructed i want to be the one responsible for doling out instructions about now okay this is the background story of the story i want to tell i came to tell a story all right come with me quickly let me start telling the story the impact the impact of this arrangement that was made in the realm of the spirit because we saw in genesis chapter 2 verse 4 that the natural realm proceeded out of the invincible realm so if you set up something in the invisible realm the symptoms of what you set up in the invisible realm will begin to influence the natural realm. that's how to bring change to this world by establishing that which you intend to see manifesting in the natural by establishing it in the realm of the supernatural it will happen here naturally whether you are a fine man or an ugly man it will, it, that, that will not matter anymore if we have time I will show you how to move the hand of God you can move his hand and when you move his hand you will see the manifestation now in the book of Genesis chapter 4 Who is there in Genesis 4? Okay. I still have time. From verse 16. So, Lucifer succeeded in this his plan. Set up a government and he was in the pinnacle of a new civilization. And all of this took place under the cover of the spirit realm. An angel had gone rogue and established his own empire. And he began to bear rule in his empire. And because it took place in the realm of the spirit, the natural realm is going to be a victim of that which has been established. Suddenly in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Suddenly there was a young man that decided that he would depart from the presence of God. He doesn't want to be subject to the instructions, the government that was obtainable in God's presence, he wanted to explore a possibility of setting out and of setting up a civilization that was apart from God. So all the details and the burdens that were attributed to the government of God will not be in the civilization that this man wants to set up. If you begin to read the the Bible from Genesis chapter 4, you would think that uh, Cain just became rebellious. You will not know that that system that was existing in the heavens was looking for a heart that has strayed so that they will form an alliance. And through that alliance, we will begin to see the things that Satan conceived manifest in the world of men through such men that have decided that they don't want to function under the government of God. Are you there? Huh. How many of you in the New Testament are seeing that word?
called world. Uh, if you have seen that world, you'll find out that the man that had the greatest insight into the concept of the cosmos, which is the world system, was Apostle John. You there? Eight times in the epistles that Paul wrote, he spoke about the world. And you know, Paul wrote volumes. He spoke about the world eight times. John did not write so much, but he spoke about the world 12 times. So it was John that had insight into the world system. I want to show you how that system was founded, how it was established. Oh, you're not following me. Only the wise, only those that have ears will be able to hear what I'm saying. The foundation of that cosmos system is what Cain is being driven to establish. And it, it's a civilization that is existing apart from God. In order for Cain to go and found that civilization, the Bible says that he departed from the presence of God. Was no longer ready to operate under God's government. And he went so far away and uh, what he did after departing from the presence of God was to establish a city in the land of North East of Eden. Now, so the question is why East? Okay, since you don't want to answer, we'll leave it. So why did the wise men come from the East? In the days of Nimrod, the Bible said, as men journeyed east. It's obvious you don't want to answer me. So we'll just forget about that. They said, and we'll smile. <laughs> Where does the sun rise from? That's the womb of the morning. Have you heard that scripture that said that people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning? So the morning has a womb. That's where the sun is born from every day. <laughs> leave that. Just leave it. <laughs> they went east of Eden that's where the gate that's where the gate to the demonic side of the spirit realm opens there are some people that face that direction to pray uh, I don't you know I, I don't need to say everything before you understand what I'm talking about they face that direction to pray this guy was tapping his frequency from that mountain that Satan had established in the spirit realm. He was getting inspiration from that place. So we could see what Satan wanted to establish, what he wanted to build in the earth through the efforts of Cain. <laughs> Have you ever seen people that don't want anything to do with the presence of God? Have you seen them? Okay. So, it did not begin today. The, the man that pioneered that order of things is called Cain. He came into alignment with that government of rebellion that was established in the realm of the spirit. And through him, a new race was going to rise upon the face of the earth. That race and the system that was born by their efforts is what John eventually called the world. So have you heard statements like the whole world lieth in the wicked one? <laughs> have you heard statements like the God of this cosmos? Because his vision was that he wants to sit in the mount of the congregation. He needs subjects in that kingdom in order to drive his agenda. So he created an environment that will be a habitat for his subjects. That system is what John, who had a very huge prophetic anointing upon him, he was able to design that system. And he called it the world. 
it is that system he said we should not love not the things that are in that system because anyone that loves that system the love of the father is not in him are you still with me still trying to tell my story so Cain decided to depart from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. If you go home, I challenge you, study that word east and find out its significance. Then you will see that everyone that strayed, it was in the direction of the east that they went. And Cain knew his wife and conceived and bare Enoch and Enoch builded the city and called the name of the city and Enoch called the name of, of uh, 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 and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built the city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch and unto Enoch was born Irad and unto Irad was born Mehujael and unto Mehujael was born Methusael and Methusael begat Lamech. I'd like you to count from Cain how many generations to Lamech. Please, quick. So if you count Cain and you keep counting, how many do we have there? One, two, three, four, five, Six. Six generations. These guys have decided to leave God. These guys have decided to set up a civilization that God was not in the center. In this, their own civilization, man was the six. Man was the highest point of this civilization. They had taken God out, seven. They have taken seven out, so now we have six. Do you still see that even though God was out, it took them six generations to pioneer polygamy? Because Lamech was the father of polygamists. They had left the presence of God, but there was still some form of restraint upon them. It took six generations before Satan could convince somebody to take his second wife. You are not following me. The name of his first wife was Ada. In the Hebrew, that means adornment. It is from Ada that we have the word adornment in English language. The way that word is used in Greek, it means to beautify so that you can make it attractive. And that that word has nothing to do with a woman. There is a way Z world can be beautified and made attractive to you that you will be bound by Z world. There is a way social media can be made attractive to you and you'll be bound by social media and it will look like cancer if someone switches off your phone. So part of the attraction that the world system that is being developed here has is ADA. There is this compelling attraction that he manifests, which is one of the ways by which he turns men into the slavery of the soul. Can you see that after six generations, the intensity of the system is beginning to increase? Its ability to make captive anyone that is within her borders, there is an intensity of its ability to tie his ability to captivate Adam. When you travel across nations, you begin to see there's a different version of Adam in, in every nation you visit that is designed to attract and to captivate. The other day we went to Togo and the ministers in Togo were complaining. 
that because of the shape of the land some priestesses that had a covenant with the goddess of the of the ocean have offered the younger generation more hope than pastors an entire generation lines up for initiation and to pledge allegiance to the spirit of the waters so when we got there the pastors told us that the churches were empty it's not only in the United Kingdom that the churches are empty Togo another message was preached and it seemed to have more hope So we had to start conducting deliverance in Togo. And even people that were preaching the gospel were bound by the same spirit. So there's an attraction. That's Ada. There's a way sin can be packaged and adequately adorned. It's type of sin. And among a certain demography, that type of sin will be made attractive. And it is through that attraction that men will be bound in their soul. I'm telling you about a government that has secured a mountain. And it is revealing its wisdom through its subjects. Are you still with me? So the second wife is Zilla. Zilla means a shade. Means a shadow. You see, Well, I'm just uh, like two days in America, so I cannot uh, say so much. A shadow is an artificial darkness. When you are under a shadow, you cannot see clearly because the light is blotted out. I'm, I'm talking about a real shadow. A shadow is a system that Satan puts in place to obscure the light so that you see through limited light just like uh, Jacob married in the night just in the morning time he was able to verify the product <laughs> but he had committed himself under the cover of night so many people live their life without light it will be, it will be easy for you to choose Satan when there is no light Satan knows that if you see him in daylight, you will not choose him. So he casts a shadow. It can be a shadow of hardship that seems to put you on the edge. And then the only outlet that Satan makes available for you to find ventilation, it is in something that breaks the laws of God. So under that circumstance, he will manipulate your psychology through mind bending and you say well this is the only option i have available the reason why you think is the only option is because of a shadow so in other he beautifies and he displays a product with so much ambience to attract your attention and in zilla he takes the light away are you there? Next verse. And Ada bear Jabal. And he was a father of such that dwell in tents and of such that have cattle. Stop there. Now I need to balance the statement I want to make now with the grace of God. Are you still with me? Do you still remember the original principle? This civilization that is about to be established has a golden principle and the golden principle is that it was everything established here was established apart from God. Don't forget that. So, when these guys lost their connection to God, so many things were lost. So they want to replace all the things that are lost. 
when they were still under the government of God, God was responsible for their upkeep, for their survival. You know, man's survival was in a habitat called Eden. Everything that he needed was in that habitat. This guy, God cast man out of the garden. People like Adam did not go too far from the garden. Cain left that whole environment. Are you getting it? So they had to establish work for self-support. So Jabal was the one that came up with the template, the idea of how to set up work for self-support. Now, listen to me. You are not with me. Ah, you know, he said, this is a surgery. What I'm doing is a surgery. Work is good. God is the author of work. In fact, the reason why there's war on earth is because there was war in heaven. The reason why there's work on earth is because there was work in heaven. God works. That's why we work. Jesus said, my father walketh. You get it, Jack? So I'm not against work. But, when you have a job and your job becomes an idol because you see your support, your entire support system in that job, you are a victim of Jabba. You are not following me. Uh, you see, we no time to tell you about the heart of man. The heart of man is a factory that can manufacture all kinds of idols. If you are not careful, a good thing can become an idol when your trust is in that thing. What Satan wants to do is that your trust, you trust your job as the means of your survival and that's an insult to God. Because God is the one that is supposed to be your father. And part of the job of the father is to provide for his children. May you not be a slave to your job. I was working in the oil industry in Nigeria. I worked there for 16 years. And I made, I was at the high level. In fact, two weeks to my becoming a manager. That was when the Lord said, resign. And I did it gladly because he took the job from my heart before he asked me to leave. I was coping with my will. Are you with me? And that was proof that the job was not my God. The same job you are working today, God, if God comes and says, sister, give it up. Can you do that? Do you have enough faith? Do you know God enough to, to walk away? Uh. What Jabal wants to do is to make you a victim of circumstances and situations so that you ad adopt a cheap God as the God you serve. A lot of people that have idols in their jobs come to church for praise and worship. It was Jabba that designed this. Are you there? You are not there. Your job is good though. But it can become bad the moment your trust is in it for your survival. The way we survive is by God. If God doesn't need your job for your survival, he can ask you to stop the job as he asked me to stop the job. And after resigning, I came home and I began a fast. And I, I said, because the inhabitants in my house are many. I said, okay, oh God, you asked me to leave my job and you didn't ask all these people to leave my house. So how do you want us to survive? And I stayed in prayer and fasting and he came to me. If I tell you what he said, you will not believe. He said, teach the Bible. That's how I want you to survive. He said, this thing doesn't add up. 
I've been teaching for how many years, for God's sake. But that was what he said. So I, I wanted to practice it. And when it doesn't work, I'll go back and say, this is your method. It's not working. You know what happened to me? I started teaching after I resigned. I noticed that when I finished teaching, people would send seed to my Zenith Banker account. Until one day, after teaching one day, the seed they sent was exactly my salary for one month. I said, he knows what he's talking about. Do you know, do you know, are you aware that in the knowledge of God is also the knowledge of how God wants to prosper you? See, forget about prosperity of formulas. The true root of prosperity is knowing God. I have prospered by hearing him. And the Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Since I worked in the oil industry and they gave me ground uh, to it, so I wanted to invest there. He said, your money is not there. Don't waste this money. Then I ran and bought one estate so that I would be seeing what I bought with 16 years of work. This is what I bought. Then in the place of prayer, he now said, I should go and give those houses out to pastors. You know why? I wanted to make an idol out of. Okay, this is how we survive. I bought it and said, have houses. Hallelujah. He said, go and allocate those houses to pastors. An estate that I bought. He showed me one pastor. He said, this pastor in this ministry, huh? give him one. This pastor, give him one. Until the last key was given out. It was after that that he told me, go and teach. So the, the safety net I made for myself was not useful. May, may the wisdom of Jabba not make you captive in Jesus' name. Are you still following me? Okay. Next verse. Uh, no, 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 no. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, next verse. And his brother's name was Juba. He was the father of such that handled the harp and the organ. This is the one that created physical music. Because the real music is the one that the Holy Ghost plays in your spirit. How many of you know that one? Oh, if you don't know it, you've not been in spiritual health all your life. Because one of the signs of spiritual health is that... The lover of the church will play, will sing to the church, will sing into your heart. When he's pulling the church out of the swamp and pulling the church out of wrinkles and entanglements, he sings to her. You will hear his song in your heart. I've been on several flights, for long flights, basking in the melodies of the Holy Ghost in my spirit, man. Those guys lost that inner sound. You know, the musical instruments that were upon Lucifer were external. Are you there? The Bible says that the tablets of and pipes were in D. That here, here. Tablets and pipes. So when he moves, he creates sound. But in us, the sound is inside of you. And the one that plays the harp of your heart for your information, your heart was designed like a harp. Oh. If you go to the book of Revelation, you'll see Jesus. He said, I'm the one that tried the reins. The reins are thick strings. I tried them to see whether the sound is consistent with the harmony that is in my realm. For many of you, the sound inside of you is not in harmony with the sound that is in heaven. You are hearing something else, something different. And that's why you've not enjoyed the blessedness of ventilation for a long time. The 
Jubal created a substitute for the inner sound. I remember those days on campus in the university. There were this set of guys that cannot sleep alone. They must have a lot of ladies in their room. And there was this music that was coming out of that room 24 hours because they need to distract themselves from the from the conviction of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was haunting them and they need to be distracted 24 hours in a day to keep the Holy Ghost away so there was sound. Heavy metal. They are victims of Juba. So my question to you now is do you still have the inner sound? When last the volcano inside of you erupt, you just knew that if you don't pray, something bad will happen. You need to take some days off from that computer and leave food. Eat apples and, and strawberry for three days. And, <laughs> if you've not experienced such, you've been a victim of, of Juba. It's a sound you hear on the train. It's a sound you hear in transit. It's a sound you hear in your city. And you can be trapped by that noise and become a captive of that noise. I want you to understand that what I'm describing to you is a system that Satan began to build with men from the mount that he secured. You still, are you still here? Let me end for now. Tomorrow I will show you the consequence of this arrangement. We'll be going step by step. Before I start showing you what God did because of this. So I'm showing you what the devil did. I'm showing you how he has entangled humankind. And he wants you and the resources that God has made available to you in terms of gifting and capacity to be used to build that system that these pioneers began to build. This is what he wants to use your grace to add on in your generation. Meanwhile, God is also building something. And I need to open your eyes to see it. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Next verse. Verse 22. And Zilla, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificial in brass and iron, and the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Tubal Cain was the one that started constructing weapons of mass destruction. When he lost his security in God, he knew he had to do something quickly about it. Hey. <laughs> So he started creating weapons quickly because he has lost his security. How many of you have been there? You did something wrong and you lost the sense of the presence of God and you knew that danger was by the door. <laughs> yes, when you felt that, you ran to the presence of God and began to plead. Tubakane did not run to God. Tubakane now went and developed weapons of mass destruction that if that danger comes out, you will do something about it. So we have Jabba. He created work for self-support. Jubal. He created what? Music for self-entertainment. Tubal Cain created weapons for self-defense. Can you see? Everything is done around self. The idea of this cosmos that Satan is building is around about self, not about God. So, this principle of I that Lucifer was running with, I will, was about self, was about me. So, all of these arrangements that were put in place was to preserve self, was to gratify self, was to support self. So that the journey of man upon the face of the earth will become a journey of self. And self has to happens to be the worst idol that the heart of man has ever manufactured. 